Hi, it's Terry with the Cover Chipboard, and I'm here today with my newest uh, SVG file, and it is for a church. Um, the one that we're going to be doing is slightly different than this. This was made for uh, someone else, but here's a front view of the church, and I'm holding this because it's not attached. On ours, um, it will be attached, but on this one, it wasn't for a specific reason. This one is on a base. Um, it will be the same size. And as you can see, this one has lights in it that are coming out the back. And the reason why this one is different is there is an album, a mini album inside. To get to it though, you have to remove the steeple and open the church. And uh, this is a box that holds the mini album, but we're not going to be doing ours this way. The roof will be completely attached and the steeple will be attached and the whole entire church will lift off of a base. And the lights will be in the base rather than, um, I don't know, you probably can't see it, but the lights are attached here to the sides of this box. So basically the same thing, it just operates a little differently. So we'll get to it. I'm gonna set this aside. <clears throat> okay, as you can see, I have pieces cut out here. The materials are listed in the PDF file that is included in the download when you unzip it. But basically I have used um, the Cricut craft board in um, a brown and white. I've used some brown cardstock. This is AC cardstock. I believe the color is called Rocky Road. Those are my roof pieces. Um, I've used uh, AC card star, Cricut card stock in a cream card. No, this is AC, I'm sorry. No, wait, it is Cricut. It's Cricut card stock in a cream. And then I've also used uh, AC card stock in white. I got something on my little turret here. So I have all my parts cut out. These are what the roof pieces look like, your shingles. They're already pre-cut for you. They're real easy to use. Now, another thing I want to mention is the um, windows. And this file is in the um, download folder, and it's the church windows. So I've printed them. It's a JPEG file. I may have a PDF file for them as well. So you just print that off on plain old white printer paper. Nothing special at your home printer. Um, if you have an issue with printing it yourself, you can take it to any of your office supply places and they will print it out for you. You just wanna make sure that the size remains accurate. And this is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of printer paper. Then I've used a real thin sheet of uh, plastic that I have taped over the top. And the reason why I'm doing this all at once because it was easier to cut it out this way, I thought. You may wanna cut everything separately. But um, I've used double-sided tape just at the top and bottom of each row, which is another thing. Doing it all together made it quicker to do. And then just attach the plastic on top. And then, all you need to do I'll do this real quickly here. I won't cut them all out, but to use them in the kit or in the project is to cut on the black lines closely. They don't have to be exact, but you want to be kind of close to them. Just like that. Like I said, it doesn't have to be exact. Just don't get too close to your windows because the outside part is where you're going to attach it to the church sides. So now, by doing that, you see how quickly that went? So now I have two windows. So I'm going to uh, stop, cut all the rest of my windows out, and then I'll be back. So you wanna take your first piece and you want to pick out the good side of course, it's going to be covered, so it really doesn't matter that much. Start from the back side of it, and you're going to attach your windows. And the easiest way to do this is with score tape. 
So I'm going to run a piece of score tape along the bottom of the windows and across the top of the windows. And I'm also going to come in and run a piece down the sides as close to the side edge as possible. This, this is going to uh, secure your windows into the frames. I'm going to remove this tape backing. Then I'm going to hold this up, and while I'm holding it up, I'm going to just kind of keep this part from touching anything else, and I'm going to line the window up just like that, and then kind of secure it from the back. Go on to the second one. You just don't want to wind up sticking it to the table. And the next one. And finally, the last one. And I don't press it down really hard because if I get it off, I can always move it around if I need to. Now that they're stuck, I want to press them down well. And now make sure you have it upright. And... You want to add score tape then to an inside piece, and you want to check, double check. If you hold this up, you want to double check that everything lines up right, which it did here, because you want the light to be able to shine through here. I'll show you in just a minute. You can also line it up. It's just slightly a hair smaller. So I'm going to run tape around the edges of this. All four edges. As well as just a little piece right here in the centers. And along these two edges here because you don't want this flopping around now remove the tape backing you can glue this as well if you'd rather use glue I just find that you don't have any moisture with the tape so you don't experience any warping at all. Um, and this tape will hold forever and a day. I suspect longer than glue will. But don't quote me on that because I've never tried it, tested it. But I do know that the tape lasts for a long, long, long time. I've got stuff I made 10 years ago that's still held together with this tape. So again, you want to kind of hold this up so you can see and line everything up. Don't press anything down real hard to start with. Once you're sure that you've got everything in place, 
lined up well, then you can press it down. So I'll try to show you this. Let me see. I don't know if you can see the light coming through that or not. Um, let me try the light on my other phone, though. I think it might be too bright. That's going to be too bright, I think. flashlight going. There, you see how you can see the light shining through? So that's what's going to happen when you have your lights inside your church. You'll be able to see through our light coming through. So there's one side done and you want to repeat this for the second side and then go ahead and bend your flaps and your flaps are going to bend inward. So there's the one side. We will attach these at a later date, but that's how that Okay, so you can see I've gone ahead and attached my um, cardstock to the front of all the three of these pieces, and the back is simply the two craft board pieces attached together and the solid piece of cardstock attached on top. So now we're going to construct this together. Um, on the flaps, I've added two strips of score tape on each one. Again, you can glue if you want. These are going to attach to the inside. And what you want to do is line up this point here with this point and this, the bottom point with that point and get them as even as possible. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if you wanted, the next step would be to put our siding on. And if you wanted, you could go ahead and do your siding while these pieces are flat. I prefer to put mine on once it's put together. So if you want to go ahead and do your siding while it's flat, just hold off putting yours together. You can put your siding on and then you can follow this part. You just have to kind of backtrack in the video. So the easiest way I think to do this is to fold this flap down, match up your corners, I'm trying to do this so I get my head in there, in the way. And then press that down really good. And if you've got um, a burnishing tool, I would burnish it. I'm just using a bone folder. Just so you know that's good and attached. And I'm going to go ahead and attach this other side first. Whoops, wrong end. I can't get my tape to come off. There. The same thing, I'm going to hold this down and line these up. Maybe they're even. Push down and burnish that. This side's already sticky, so now I'm going to attach this piece to here. And if you lay this flat, you can just kind of butt these up to each other and press down. Okay, um, the next piece we're going to do is the front uh, door area. So we're going to go ahead and fold this, and where your crease marks are, or your score lines, you're going to fold into that line, and you want to score, and there are two here. Now this craft board works really well. If you just kind of bend like I'm bending and then press down with your fingers and then score. And then here is our end flap. 
and it works best if you fold and kind of pinch from the center and work your way out. That way it stays pretty straight. Now this is going to attach to the inside here. So I'm going to go ahead and add some score tape on that. Little piece. This is going to attach this way. Again, line up your corners. And then press. And run your tool up in there and burnish that real good. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now this back side is going to be attached right here. So you'll want to put score tape on that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. But I'm not going to attach it till later. Probably would have been easier to attach your score tape before you got the piece together, but. This will work right here. Oh, dog hair. Okay, so now we have these three pieces that we want to attach. I think I'm going to glue those on just because it's going to be quicker. And you just want to line it up. It should go all the way to the edges. There's the first piece, and now we're going to do the sides. You want to try to get that glue up right to the edges. Oops. Need to get my other glue bottle filled up. And if these don't match right up on the corners or edges here, don't worry about it because it's going to be covered. Okay, so now 
I'm not going to attach this because I want to put my siding on first and then attach it so that then I'm not in the way of anything else. So we're going to set that aside for just a second, for a little bit anyway. And the next step would be to do our siding. Now, if you follow the, um, this is not the correct one, but if you follow the diagram or the um, pieces shown on the um, PDF, it will tell you which pieces, because I've already pre-cut the siding for you. Maybe you can see from this, this is for the steeple. But as you can tell, they're pre-cut to fit the shape of whatever they're for, so that you don't have to do any trimming or anything. So I've got to leave this one on the mat because I don't want to pull it off yet. And um, what I suggest, if you have extra mats, then cut, use a bunch of mats and do all your siding cutting at one time. Leave it on the mat. Do not pull it off. And I'll show you why here later. I just found it easier to match the siding to the shape if I had it all on the mat and worked with them one at a time. So I'm going to prepare my siding for the front of the church and then I'll be back. Okay, so... As you can see, I have my sides all fixed up with the um, backing, the windows, and the cardstock on the front. I did connect all four pieces, but I didn't connect them together because I was going to have you put the siding on this way. However, it's much easier if it's flat. Since there's no bottom, it's wobbly and it's hard to hold on to. So as you can see here, I've added score tape to completely cover, or mainly, mostly cover, this one side. I'll raise this up some so you can see real good. And um, I've cut my siding. And again, I talked about earlier that um, if you stick to the groups that I have in the files and you keep them grouped together and cut them that way, then it will be easy to know where to place the strips because everything's already been cut. If you can see on this one, you can see where the windows have been not cut. So I've cut the strips to fit perfectly in between and around the curves. So if you pull, the idea is to pull these off one at a time, the strips, and add them to your side. That way you should get everything evenly and not have to do any trimming or anything. Um, so I'm just going to show you this one side and then you can do your siding from that point and next time for the next video we'll come back and do some more construction. And the easiest way I found to do this is to pull one or two of these strips off at a time. I'm going to pull these bottom three off. If you go pulling it all off then your hand can get stuck. This tape didn't want to come off here. Um, as you're trying to put strips on and it, it can really kind of be cumbersome so I'm just going to take these bottom three and then on my mat here let me move this up here where you can see it better on my mat I'm going to use my tweezers you can use a Cricut tool if you want and I'm going to peel up one of these strips at a time now I needed to change my blade so my siding's a little off. And then I'm going to start at the very bottom and add the first strip, making sure that I get it straight. Then I'm going to peel up the second piece. And I'm going to have to do a little trimming there. And I'm going to butt this up right next to where the previous strip was. Just kind of right on top of it. And if you go slow, you can feel and put it down on there. Let's see, do another one. Oh, I need a new blade, I think. 
I can pull some of these up. Pull this one from down here. This is a new mat. I kind of like a mat that's already been used to do these with. So I really don't want to try to have to trim these up. But sometimes you have to do that. And I'm going to add the next one. And again, I just kind of start and just kind of push it up off of there. So there's those. And now, that's the last one before you start these side ones. So I'm going to take this little piece off. And I'm going to work one section at a time rather than across now. So I'm going to peel this off. I'm going to have to get my sleeves out of the way. And now I'm going to start peeling these pieces. Now this one has a, this strip has a tiny little bitty piece that goes right up in here. So you need to flip. I thought that was the last piece, but it's not. I'm going to flip these up and just kind of press them back a little. Another option is to pull that up and add your score tape to the back of the piece, but I think it takes longer. Now putting your siding on is going to take you a little while. I like to do this in the evenings. I just set a little TV tray up in front of my couch and while I'm watching TV do it. Oh, this tape's giving me trouble today. It usually does real well. This is a off brand. But it normally does pretty good. I don't know why it's being so contrary today. Maybe the humidity. Or weather it's been really weird my one of my sons lives in Chicago and he sent me an email today and uh, he travels with his job they have meetings or uh, clients and that type of thing he has to go do but he sent me a picture I think this was from last week because he's back home now I believe but he um, had a meeting in Florida and um, he left when he left Chicago, there was snow outside. He took a picture, and so there was tons of snow around. Then he went to Florida, and it's, like, sunny. And one day, I guess it rained on him while they were in Florida. So he sent me a picture Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And he's got snow, and then sunshine, and then rain. So he went through the whole gambit in, like, three days. <laughs> Come on, come up. There we go. All right, so here's this little piece that fits under the windows. And you want to make sure that you line this part up under the windows. So you might want to do this one just a little bit at a time. There we go. Now also you could use distressing ink on this if you wanted. So this this one's done. So now I'm going to do this strip. So I'm going to fold these back down so they're out of my way. And just continue. 
going to regret using this brand new mat on this. And sometimes if you want to hold on to your piece, you can. And then just kind of make sure it's sitting on top of the, or right up, butt it up next to the other one. This one needs to be trimmed. Because it, it gives you the ability to kind of push that up next to the other one. But if you uh, want to use distressing ink, you can ink the edges of these, or you can do it after you have it all applied. Either way, worked out well for me. This is like the third one I've made. Try to keep these straight, but they don't have to be perfect. You know, a long time ago, siding was never perfect on houses, so. And if it looks a little rugged, that's not a big deal either. Ugh, just had a hard time cutting through for some reason. Now you can see this is, well, you may not be able to see it, but this piece is kind of curved on this one corner, so it's going to curve up around the window there. So then I'm going to pull these strips off. Oh, excuse me for my sniffling. And I'm going to start applying these pieces. This is also the same way that you would apply uh, shingles pretty much. Now on the shingles, I go ahead and apply the score tape to the actual shingle strip itself because they uh, overlap. Almost up to the second part. Again, I'm not gonna have you watch me do the whole entire thing that would get a little monotonous, but I wanted to show you this first part of it. And if you can see on this piece, it's curved on both the left and right sides so that it just to both windows. And if it's not perfect, don't worry about it because, again, we're going to have trim that goes over each one of these windows. Um, let's see where my trim pieces are, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It helps when you go cut all this trim out if you'll kind of keep things, all your trim, in a little bucket or something. So once you're all done with your siding, these will fit on top like so, and then there's another piece that strip that fits on top of here to give it dimension. And there's two of these for each window. So you'll take two of these, glue them together, then glue them on here, and then there's uh, another strip that goes on the top. And that's how you'll do your windows when you get to that point. So you can see I've already got this much done. So just keep going and go ahead and apply all of your siding here then you would start at the next piece, which would be, you can do the other, this page has got the other side on it, and then it has the siding for this section. So go ahead and attach all of your siding, and then when you're done, we'll connect it, and we'll work on the other areas. <laughs> 